Hi and welcome to the 22nd video in our C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. So in the last video we started looking at classes and as I said we're going to keep building on uh, the same application just because I'm breaking down the classes into a few videos just to really make sure that everyone understands the different aspects of the classes. Uh, so in the last video we created our employee class. Uh, we made some public variables uh, so we were able to access them in our application. And then we also created a public method that we could also call in our application here. Uh, so we created some employees. Uh, we assigned an employee ID, a first name, a last name. Um, and then we also applied, uh, we also created a second one with just the employee ID. And then we had the default values here uh, for first name and last name. Uh, so that everything was working fine. So if we actually test this out here, we will actually see our application pop up here and we see our two employees. We see uh, the first one with the employee ID of 1001. Uh, first name is Jacked, last name is Programmer. And then we have our other one, which is employee ID 1004, uh, which we didn't give a first name or a last name. Uh, so it actually ended up taking the defaults of first name and last name, John, Jane, and Doe. Uh, so if we actually look here, we see John, Jane, and Doe. Uh, so that actually worked perfectly fine. So today we're going to be looking at constructors and how we can have multiple constructors for a class. Um, so let's actually go ahead and let's get started here. Uh, so a constructor is really what we see here. So here we, we're declaring an employee, we're naming it test, and we are creating it of uh, type employee. And then inside this parentheses, uh, we should be able to specify some properties. So we can actually set up our employee in just one line, give it an employee name, a first name, a last name. Uh, you might have seen this in other programming languages when you're instant, uh, creating like an object. Uh, or instantiating a new object of a type class um, or anything like that. So let's actually go ahead and let's create our constructor here. Uh, and this is going to help build the object, hence the name constructor. So we are going to, of course, have to call this public because we need to be able to access it from outside here. So we're going to do a public and then we have to give it the same name as our class. So it's going to be public employee, open and close parentheses, and then open and close curly brackets. And then inside the parentheses is where we are gonna put in our parameters, very similarly to a method uh, that we've seen before or a function, uh, where we're able to put different parameters here that we're gonna be accepting. So we're gonna be accepting a int, an integer, and we're gonna be accepting the employee ID. And then we're also gonna take in a string for first name, and we're also going to take in a string for last name. All right, so here we are. We're taking in uh, an employee name, a first name, and a last name. Now, to actually associate that when we take it in, we are going to want to go ahead and set these um, member variables of our object. So what we actually need to do, what you might be tempted to do is employee ID equals employee ID, but we're actually going to get an error here, uh, which is going to be assignment made to same variable. So what we actually want to say is this dot employee ID. And the, this keyword is going to reference to this instance of the object. And what that means is when we're going to be calling the employee here. So let's actually set this up here. So 1001 uh, jacked and then programmer here. So when we're actually calling this, it's going to create an employee and it's going to say, all right, so this instance of employee is going to be, the employee ID is going to equal what we passed in for employee ID, and that's going to equal 1001. And first name is going to be Jack and last name is going to be a programmer here. So we're going to do the same thing for this dot first name equals first name. And we're going to say this dot last name equals last name. All right, so we have our constructor here. 
and we have our test employee here. So let's actually go ahead and let's just erase this here. So here we have, um, we're actually going to erase this as well because we don't have an empty constructor anymore. So this is going to have an error. So we're going to be creating an employee test again. We are creating as a new employee. We are passing in the employee ID, jacked, and programmer. And we're just going to print the info. So if we actually go ahead and look at that, we get basically the same result minus the second employee here. We do get the employee ID 1001. And then the first name is Jack, last name is programmer. And we can easily go ahead and actually create a second one here. Uh, so let's create a second one here. And let's call this one uh, Richard. And we're going to set the employee ID to 1005. And we're just going to set the first name to Richard, last name to Smith here. And we are going to print out the information of Richard here. And as we can see, we now have our two employees. Uh, this looks very much easier to read. Now, the only thing is, in theory, if I go ahead and do Richard dot employee ID equals 999, it will actually change my employee ID. Now, I might not, I might want this to be allowed, um, but in most cases, you're not going to want to allow direct access to these variables. So now that we have our constructor, what we can actually say is we can actually change all these public variables to private. So let's add that keyword here. So let's change the public keywords to private. And that is going to make them so that they are only accessible by the application, by this class, and not the actual application that is using it. So now if we do Richard, uh, Richard dot, we will see we only get the print info because print info is the only thing that is actually public. And if we made this private, you would only be able to use print info from inside the actual class itself. Now let's say we want to give maybe some multiple options for people. Maybe, maybe we don't want them to have to put a last name and a first name. Maybe we only want, um, you know, maybe we don't have their first name or last name yet, but we just want like an empty employee object with a default first name and default last name. And we just want them to have an employee ID. We can actually create a second now, what would actually be recommended is put the least amount of options first. So let's do public employee, and we're gonna do an open and closing curly, uh, open and closing parentheses, and open and closing curly brackets. Now, as you can see, we actually don't get an error, even though these two uh, functions or constructors have the same name, and that is okay because they actually have a different amount and different set of parameters. So here, we're just gonna take in the employee ID, and that is it. And we are going to say this dot employee ID equals employee ID. And let's actually go ahead and let's actually change this one. So instead of Richard Smith, we are just going to instantiate Richard with the employee ID of 1005. And if we run this here, we actually still see we do get our default names still. And all we had to do was just pass in the employee ID. You can have as many constructors as you really want um, for different situations. Uh, of course, it's completely based on the class that you want. Maybe you only want one constructor because you want all the fields that you acquire, uh, you want them to be put in. Uh, so that is pretty much constructor. So we've seen now, we've seen how to construct a class. We've seen how to create um, different functions or methods inside of a class, how to restrict or expose the different variables. Uh, so the next thing we're going to see is really how to use those variables a little bit more in the next video. So we're going to see how to get set uh, variables, uh, which is a little bit more like more methods, uh, but they are very important to different classes uh, just to give the ability for applications to access those specific variables. So hopefully that was fairly clear on how to create constructors for your applications and how to use them. Now, of course, if we go ahead and we try to create an employee test two as just a new employee, open and close parentheses, 
it's not going to work uh, because we do ha only have two constructors. You would be able to, of course, create a constructor with just an empty, uh, empty set of parameters, and you would be able to set a bunch of defaults for them. Of course, you'd have to set a default for employee ID, uh, but that would be the way to set that up. So that is possible. So you could definitely play around with that some more um, in waiting for the next video. If you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below in the comment section. If it's something specific, I'll answer you directly. If it's something I think a lot of people can benefit from, I'll be creating a video on it. Also, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and also don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. I will see you guys on the next video.